in this medical apps masterclass we'll talk about chronic lymphocytic leukemia now when i talk about chronic lymphocytic leukemia the most important point which i want you to remember it it is the most common leukemia in adult very very important very frequently it has been asked so chronic lymphocytic leukemia also called as cln is the most common leukemia in, in an adult so what is the most common leukemia which you find in children the correct answer will be again it's a lympho uh, lymphoblastic leukemia but it is acute lymphoblastic leukemia so again these two are very important one liners another very important point about chronic lymphocytic leukemia you have to remember is because all these b cells okay so this is a uh, disorder in which there is abnormal proliferations of b cell okay so all these b cells they go and you know uh, infiltrate the lymph node and spleen okay so because of the infiltration of lymph node or spleen they are also called as small cell lymphoma again a very favorite question so chronic lymphocytic leukemia because they go and infiltrate the lymph node it is also called as small cell lymphoma so what is the major pathology here there is an abnormal proliferation of immuno incompetent b cells so b cells start multiplying okay abnormally but all that b cells are immuno incompetent they are abnormal cells primarily in the mantle zone of the lymph node so this is about your lymphocytic leukemia let's look at what are the chromosomal abnormalities which are found in this abnormal b cells so all these are very very important questions which they will ask you in the examination the most common uh, you know ab chromosomal abnormalities are deletion of 11q 13q and 17q okay there is a trisomy associated it is trisomy 12 okay so these are the most important you know chromosomal abnormalities which are seen in your uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia they, again there was a question that which is the most common of these the correct answer is 13q so again this was asked 13q is the most common uh, chromosomal abnormality in your chronic chronic lymphocytic leukemia there are some other couple of uh, chromosomal abnormalities which have been asked in the examination one is the gain of function of notch gene then there is also over expression of two anti apoptotic gene one is bcl2 and one is your zap70 zap they have asked full form that is zeta associated protein so these are both anti apoptotic genes and both have been found to be over expressed in your cases of chronic lymphocytic leukemia there is another very interesting mutation that is called a somatic hypermutation again this is found in your chronic lymphocytic leukemia a very characteristic find you know point about somatic hypermutation is that in whichever tumor there is a somatic hypermutation they are all sorrow growing tumors this is a point which you have to remember wherever somatic hypermutation will be seen in whichever tumors there will be somatic hypermutation they are all slow growing tumor so CLL also comes in that category CLL is basically a slow growing tumor so obviously another very important point uh, on this is that CLL wherever the cases is, is having somatic hypermutation it is associated with good prognosis so what is another uh, gene mutation which is generally associated with good prognosis again 13q mutation is also associated with good prognosis okay rest all the other mutations are associated with bad prognosis is it clear now another very very important point especially they have asked a lot of times in viva as well as in uh, one-liners is that CLL is the only hematological malignancy where there is no association with radiation exposure we know that most of the hematological malignancies the you know there's an association with radiation exposure but CLL is not associated with radiation exposure again this is a favorite question so these are the important you know uh, chromosomal abnormalities which are seen in CLL let's quickly look at pathogenesis I have told you that there is an abnormal proliferation of immuno incompetent B cells so there will be increase in the B cells there will be some changes in the bone marrow level also vimentin this is a cytoskeletal okay cytoskeletal protein this is defective and we'll see what is uh, what happens because of that and obviously there will be abnormal immunoglobulins okay because the i've told you these are immuno incompetent b cells which are proliferating now b cells increase will you know you can see a lymphocytosis in peripheral smear when because of the increase in the b cells but remember these b cells not only increase in the peripheral smear but they also infiltrate the lymph node and spleen so you will have lymph node enlargement or and splenomegaly okay splenomegaly so this is generally seen in your uh, 
A. Let's talk about bone marrow. So obviously there is a B cell proliferation, so bone marrow will become hypercellular. But characteristic point here is that there will be decrease in the erythroid and megakaryocyte or platelet precursors, but there will be increase in the lymphocytic precursors. So even though the bone marrow is hypercellular, but there will be decrease in the erythroid and megakaryocytes precursor, but only increase in the lymphocytic precursors. Because of this defective cytoskeleton, these cells will be very fragile. Okay, so you will have fragile lymph lymphocytes. And so when you prepare a peripheral smell, I'll show you the image, they will be presenting as smudge cells. Basically, these cells will be, you know, uh, burst and they will present as smudge cells. I'll show you an image in a while. And the last is abnormal immunoglobulin. So they will be decreased in the gamma globulin level. But remember, this abnormal globulin can lead to hemolytic anemia, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. They can also lead to thrombocytopenia. Again, autoimmune thrombocytopenia. And these are, you know, presenting features also sometimes. There is also, because these immunoglobulins are abnormal, they will be increased in the rate of infection. And this question has been asked. The most common cause of death in a patient of CLL will be the infection only. So most of these patients, because the tumor itself is slow growing, the cause of death in these patients, the most common cause in the, these patients will be your increase in the infection rate. Let's look at how these patients will present. Generally, the age is more than 65, you know, so this is an old age patient. And the age of presentation, the mean age of presentation in latest books is said to be around 72 years. So these are slow growing tumors. They have non-specific symptoms. So these patients will present with absolutely non-specific symptom. Primarily, these symptoms, symptoms are due to hypermetabolism. There is an increased B cell turnover. So there will be all the symptoms of hypermetabolism. So what are these non-specific symptoms? Symptoms like night sweat, weight loss, low grade fever, fatigue. All these are the symptoms. These are the most common presenting symptoms of the patient. So Nothing very specific, night sweats, weight loss, long, low grade fever. When you measure the fever, the patient may not even have fever, fatigue. So these are the general presenting features. Also, if you talk, you will get a history of recurrent infection, recurrent pneumonia or activation of herpes zoster or herpes labialis. If you examine the patient, you will have pale pallor. You can even find petechia in some patients. Generally, the patient will not talk about enlarged lymph node, but when you examine him, you can find enlarged lymph node or spleen. If the platelet has fallen very low, sometimes the patient may present with epistasis also. Also, some patients, uh, you know, present with petechia. So, here you can see, uh, you know, because of the fall in the thrombocyte, their patient is having, you know, generalized petechia formation. So, these are the clinical presenting features. Remember, again, these are this is an old man or female and they have completely non-specific symptoms. So, you, when you order the workup, so the first thing you do is a TLC and you will be surprised that the TLC is very, very increased. You know, it can go up to 1 lakh also. So normal TLC is 4K to 11K. So TLC will increase. But to establish a diagnosis, you will have to talk about B-cell lymphocytosis. So B-cell level is more than 5,000 per microliter and that should be demonstrated for 3 months. So both the value as well as duration is important. Now this is very important to remember because the earlier cutoff was 4,000 per microliter. So this is now all the latest books have stopped mentioning that now they talk about 5000 uh, microliter uh, per microliter. So this is an important value. What will you do on a peripheral smear? So when you do a peripheral smear, I told you because the cytoskeleton we maintain is defective. So these cells will start, you know, they can, they will very easily be fragile and they will be broken when you make a peripheral smear and these are called as smudge cells. The smudge cells are also called as basket cells or parasite cells. Another very important thing is all these abnormal B cells look exactly the same. If you see all these cells are looking exactly the same. Is it clear? So that is what we call as a convent curl appearance because all these B cells look exactly the same. So we give it a name as convent curl because all the convent curls will look same and they are in clusters. So because all these abnormal cells look absolutely similar to uh, you know each other in morphology. So we give it a name as convent curl appearance. What is the investigation of choice? Once you see this peripheral smear, the investigation of choice is flow cytometry. It's again a very, very important point. But in examination, they are going to ask you that flow cytometry is done on which sample. So remember, it's the peripheral blood which you take for flow cytometry. And when you get a flow cytometry, it's basically all the CD markers which are given. So CD19 is positive. Now we know that CD19 is a B cell marker. Okay. 
CD 20, 21, 23 will be, 23 will be present and this is very important. This, you know, CD, this CD 5 will also be present. Now CD 5 we know is a T cell marker, right? CD5 we know is a T cell marker. So here we have a B cell with a T cell marker. Okay. Now another very important thing is if the same you know flow cytometry report is there, but CD323 is negative, then what will be the diagnosis? Then it will be mantle cell lymphoma. I'll talk about it in detail, but remember these flow cytometry findings you have to know uh, to establish a diagnosis. Okay. We generally do not do a lymph node biopsy in these cases because the diagnosis does not require. But lymph node biopsy can be indicated when the you know um, uh, when the size of the lymph node is increasing fastly, or you know there is pain or fever, uh, and all these indicates that basically this uh, CLL has converted into diffuse large B cell lymphoma. You know there are additional mutations, and now this CLL has converted into high grade lymphoma like diffuse large B cell lymphoma. In that case, and this conversion basically is called as Richard syndrome. Okay. So lymph node biopsy is not normally indicated. It is only indicated when the, I'll just write it here, when the size is increased, okay? And basically it indicates conversion into a high grade tumor, okay? And this is called as Richards syndrome, okay? Richards syndrome. So what do we find in lymph node biopsy? Basically when you do a lymph node biopsy, okay? So you see that there is a diffuse eff effacement, which means if you see this is a lymph node throughout the lymph node, the B cells has infiltrated. So diffuse effacement and you can see there are certain areas which are more you know paler. So these are basically focal proliferation areas and this is called as pseudo follicle. So these are the two important findings that they will be diffuse effacement but certain proliferative areas these are called as pseudo follicle. So these are the two important findings. Before I move forward in terms of how you know we have to manage the patient and all there's a very important point which I want to talk about is basically how to approach a B cell tumor based on CD markers. You will be given a flow cytometer report. So remember, when you talk about B cell tumors, CD19 has to be present because CD19 is a marker of B cell. Then the next thing you are going to see is your CD5. If CD5 is present, there's only two possibility, either CLL or mantle cell lymphoma and that you can you know, know by looking at the CD23. If CD23 is present, it will be CLL. If CD23 is absent, it is mantle cell lymphoma. If let's say CD5 is minus, then you look at CD10. And if CD10 is positive, it is your follicular lymphoma. Again, very easy. If CD10 is absent, you will look at CD25. And if CD25 is absent, it is marginal cell, marginal zone lymphoma. And if CD25 is present, it is hairy cell lymphoma. So all these five different types of B cell lymphomas, you can very easily diagnose. I'll tell you, it's a very simple algorithm. Okay. First, you first you look at is your, if the B cell should be present, B cell marker, CD marker, CD19 should be present. Then you quickly look at CD5. Now CD5 is remember a T cell marker. So if T cell marker is present only two possibilities CLL or mantle cell which you can very easily diagnose by looking at the CD23. If let's say CD5 is absent then it can be follicular hairy cell or marginal. Quickly look at CD10. CD10 will give you follicular lymphoma. If CD10 is absent then CD25 is marginal zone. CD25 positive is your hairy cell lymphoma. So this is the approach of a patient to with uh, you know B cell lymphomas. Let's look at the management. Before we manage, we have to know the staging because staging will decide what we have to do in this patient because low risk patient, you know, or low grade patients, we generally manage conservatively because as I told you, these are old patients and if the tumor already, because the tumor is slow growing, so you may not go very aggressive on those patients. So there are two stagings. One is Savitsky or Rai Savitsky and Bennett classification. So let's look each one by one. So Rai, Rai Savitsky basically looks at three important symptoms. So we know that what are the three important symptoms? One is increase in the B cell. Okay. Then we have got lymph node enlargement and then we have got, you know, autoimmune either hemolytic anemia or thrombocytopenia. So if only B cell enlargement is there, it is low risk. If B cell increase and lymph node is there, it is intermediate. And if all the three are there, then it is high risk. Very easy to understand. Remember, most common almost 50% present will present as intermediate. One fourth of your patient will present either low risk or high risk. Again, is it very, is it clear? It's very simple. Next is your Bennett classification. Again, 
when it classification does not talk about lymphocytosis it simply talks about lymphadenopathy and autoimmune features so if there is less than three areas of uh, lymphadenopathy then we call it as a if it is more than three areas of lymphadenopathy without anemia or thrombocytopenia we, we call it p and if at any stage even if lymph node is enlarged or not enlarged if we have features of autoimmune hemolytic anemia or thrombocytopenia which means the hemoglobin is less than 10 or platelet is less than what we classify it as high grade or c so these are the two classifications which you have to know so once you have once you have known it how do we manage it i told you low risk or stage a you know more than 75 years we will manage it uh, conservatively if it is intermediate or high we can go for two different protocols one is fcr and pcr fcr is more preferred it is fludarabine with cyclophosphamide and rituximab pcr is pentostatin with cyclophosphamide and rituximab in case the patient is not tolerating your fludarabine now remember rituximab is your anti cd20 okay both these all these tumors express cd20 so that is why rituximab forms a part of the protocol a question has been asked what is the drug of choice then remember it is fludarabine is the drug of choice what is the treatment of choice it is allogenic bone marrow transplantation and last they have asked about a latest drug which is used in this b-cell lymphomas that is allotinib now allotinib is basically a b-cell tyrosine kinase inhibitor all these b-cell tumors have abnormal signaling pathway of tyrosine kinase so this tyrosine kinase inhibitor b-cell tyrosine kinase inhibitor allotinib is one of the latest drug again the question has been asked so this completes our entire discussion on cll it was a small discussion but every point they have asked in the examination and you know you can be given as a clinical question they can ask about the cd markers you know they can uh, you know uh, they can talk about the chromosomal abnormalities all these questions have been asked so thank you so much for attending this session let's meet in another session